side. Well, why I've got you on here, because I love asking my students, talk to me a little bit about sacred priesthood, because you're on the path. You yes. completed three classes at this point. Um, and I know you were hesitant for a little bit about, should I do this? Should I not do this? And a lot of people think they have to be ready to take that class. Just share your experiences with us. Absolutely. I was hesitant because I held this huge respect for the mystery schools. I came into Discovery Spiritual Gifts not knowing anything about mystery schools. And here I, I'm learning it's a it's a whole thing. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. And so I'm hearing, you know, Violet told me probably a week into working there, you're going to be on the sacred priesthood path at some point. And I'm like, okay. So I had, I was intimidated by it. I was super intimidated by it. Um, it is to be revered and respected and the sacredness of it um, intimidated me. So I, you know, I had the whole, am I good enough? Do I know enough? Am I ready for this? It's, you know, you, you have to be on time and being on time usually isn't a problem for me, but I worry about things. I never like to be late and, and we have to have respect for the temple and you have to wear, um, long dresses. And I don't have a problem with that, any of it really, but I worried what if my dress is too short or what if I say the wrong thing or I enter the room from the, we enter the room and walk clockwise. All of our motions are clockwise, which makes sense. It's a nice flow, but you bow when you come into the to the temple and you bow when you exit and I oh my gosh what if I forget what if I forget what to do and so the first class I had it all built up in my mind I was super emotional <laughs> like I'm a mermaid so I live in the water and water is is the emotions right so I was very emotional and I had built it all up and I was so nervous about the whole experience but once we got into the the temple I almost called it a classroom it is the temple when we're in there and I just the energy of everybody else being there together it was wonderful and we did a tincture that day um the first one was new beginnings and so it was uh, all um shamanish shamanistic shaman shama shamanic oh my gosh my words and that part doesn't resonate with me as much but I valued the whole experience I mean it was very the whole thing I valued and so the second class I went into knowing a little bit more about what to expect and I was a lot more at ease I thought I know I can do this I did the class work the, the online um, homework and everything and I knew I could do it. And our group is starting to bond and we're starting to get to know each other, which makes me more comfortable with the participants, with the other people in the class. And this third class was the most fun. I the longest time we did beads. So <laughs> I was super excited about it. I have my necklace here. We did our rosaries and I've been wearing it because I love it. And I was able to help other you know, our other priests and priestess um, kind of crimp their beads and make sure that everything put their necklaces together. So I was honored to be able to do that. But it was a lot light, more lighthearted to me. We had some music at the end. We're singing and all of this. Um, nobody ever wants me until I'm unavailable and my phone keeps. <laughs> so, anyway, I really value the experience and I love like all the things. So we've just finished up earth, um, three classes of earth and I value it. You know, I've got the workbooks. I've got a workbook laying right next to my couch and I'll go back and reference things. Oh, I know. What, what do I need? <laughs> and everything seems to be happening right when you need it. Like March was a really difficult month for me. And the class in March was about protection. And I thought, huh, <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. I do need protection. And I learned all about it. And it, it's just, it's coming together in the most magical and special ways. So 
I, I appreciate all the things and Violet puts so much work into the online platform and there's all of these resources and whew, it's, it's, a lot, it's a big, it's, it's a big class. So mm -hmm. Carrie, I know there's a couple of things. So people step on the path and they think that it's about, you know, we take a, a Reiki class because we're going to get certified and we're going to go out and do healing, or we take an Akashic Records class and we're going to get certified and we're going to go and do reading. So when they look at the mystery school classes, the first, one of the questions that a lot of people have is, is this going to help me start a spiritual business? Is this going to help me launch something? And it's hard for people to put their thoughts around that the mystery school classes are really for you. They're mm -hmm. for your development and expansion. Is it going to change the way you do things, whether you paint a wall or you're responsible for accounting? Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. it's not meant for you to go out and create a business. Mm -hmm. It's meant for your own personal growth. And when people step on the path, their family gets very nervous. So about, you know, what are you doing? What is this about? Where are you going? And what would you tell people that are, you know, thinking about taking this path about, you know, your family and friends and their perspective and, and what you share with yours? Yeah, I think you have to just continue to be open-minded and understand that most any kind of negative response from family members is more likely about fear than anything else it's the unknown and I received some of that from my parents my dad is a whole lot more open-minded than my mom and you know I've got the best parents but it it was fed by fear so they didn't understand what the word sacred meant and they didn't understand they thought I was going towards this um a cult you know there's the that and all of these because they were scared they didn't understand the the terminology was the the biggest hiccup here so i was like okay do you know what holy means and my mom's like yeah i know holy and i'm like well sacred is right there with holy i i use them as not interchangeable but along the same lines like you can think of sacred as holy you can think of meditation as prayer if you want to. I mean, it's it's just in how the words are used. And so I encouraged my family to try to keep an open mind and just trust that I know what I'm doing and I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not falling into anybody's evil plan or anything. It's all about light. And for me, I was raised Baptist and I valued my upbringing and it all goes back to God for me. It doesn't for everybody and that's okay but that's where I am. And I feel like people are going to have a response to the commitment that you take in stepping into sacred priesthood, but it's more likely about fear and what they don't understand. I love that because, you know, I raised my children Southern Baptist as well. There's lots of fears, religious, what are your belief system? And you're so right. It's about wording. You know, mm -hmm. what does sacred mean to you? How would you define it? What does magic mean to you? Right. How would you define it? Those are all words that can have scary um, definitions to, to them, like right? They can, they can be very fearful. And think about this, those that are listening. This is a honeycomb calcite crystal heart. Now, if I tell you today that this crystal is full of light and love and it wants only the best for you, and you believe that, then that is the energy that it's going to hold. If I tell you today that by working with this crystal, it has negative effects, that it's going to hurt you, and you have a belief around that, that I am telling oh. you the truth, then you've created that intention with this. So everything we touch, everything we look at, Everything that we consider has, we have polarity here on earth. There's light and dark, harmony and disharmony. That is what it's all about. And whatever your intention or belief for any item, any symbol, any intention, any thought, that is your belief around it. And there's been a lot of symbols that have been converted 
to create fear so that you don't tap into them. So you don't connect with them. So they take your personal power away. Mm -hmm. And if you walk in the light of the divine and believe in God, believe in source, believe in something bigger, believe that there is love and light and compassion and joy. And we're all supposed to have that. Then you step into that energy. But if you believe in harm or hurting somebody else or negativity, then you step into that. And it's all about choices. Mm -hmm. And I get told all the time um, for the listeners, oh, this is an occult. Well, mm -hmm. by definition, my daughter has told me, by <laughs> definition, there are three parts. You must have a charismatic leader. Okay, I'm sorry. I love people, <laughs> right? <laughs> You must have a charismatic leader. That is it, right? You must invest money to be part of it. Well, yeah, I'm teaching a class. It does Running have money business. attached yeah. to it, <laughs> right? And number three, you must do an initiation. Yes, we do initiate the priest and priestesses and the order of Melchizedek, which is in the Bible, folks, which is the oldest sacred priesthood there is. And being a priest or a priestess means being of service to God, the divine source, whatever that belief is. How are you going to make the world a better place? How are you going to make your life a better place? How can you help people and love people? And that's what it's all about. So by definition, every church is an occult. By definition. By definition. That is true. Mm -hmm. Are you drawn to sacred teachings? Are you being called back to the high altar? For centuries, the mystery schools were hidden in plain sight, and they contained the secret mysteries of the ancient teachings. Individuals that had access to these sacred teachings were those who have eyes to see, and those who have ears to hear. Those called to these teachings have been sacred priests and priestesses in previous lifetimes. Violet has been a sacred priestess during many lifetimes, including serving within the Temple of Ancient Wisdom during her lifetime in Lemuria. Her soul's purpose is to create heaven on earth. She was called to open the Sacred Temple Mystery School and share her wisdom through the programs of Sacred Priesthood, Warriors of Light, Sacred Alchemy, and the Tree of Wisdom.